before beginning your sermon, just a few personal words, if I may. I've had some involvement with Gallatin Congregation through the years, not just when I was a district president, but back in 1988, I believe it was, when you elected not to join the ELCA. You had been an American Lutheran Church, and you joined the LCMS, Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. And you have been a blessing to us, and hopefully we have been a blessing to you as well. <clears throat> also, sometimes people ask me to introduce myself, and uh, the way I do that oft times is uh, kind of in the spirit of Jesus, who asked his disciples, who do you say that I am, you know? And uh, so who do you say I am, or who is this guy up in the pulpit today? Well, sometimes I simply say, uh, in the spirit of AA, hi, I'm Roy, and I'm a recovering parish pastor. <laughs> recovering not from being one, but from not being one. I recovered from being a district president the day I walked out of the office. Parish pastor, I'd go back to it in a heartbeat, but who wants a 91-year-old pastor? Well, I said that introduction just like that to a church up in Red Wing, Minnesota, where they make those Red Wing shoes, you know? And uh, I said, who wants a 91-year-old pastor? And two elderly ladies walked out of church and said, we'll take you. <laughs> I didn't pursue it any further. <laughs> so. I'd like to begin the sermon, Grace to you and peace from God our Father, from our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The Genesis account that was read a few moments ago so well uh, tells about light. In fact, that's the very first thing that God created was light. How he did that before the heavenly bodies and all those things, you'll have to ask your pastor. But he did. He created light first of all. Well, he himself was light, so I guess that wasn't too hard after all. When I think of light, first of all, Food for the Poor uses that word as a kind of an introduction to their ministry. Food for the Poor is a ministry of many different denominations, including Roman Catholic. So we have speakers from various denominations that go out every Sunday. I think there are 95 of us all together from various denominations. So it's an interesting ministry, and the emphasis is often on light, even when the Gospel or the Old Testament lesson doesn't mention it. And speaking of light, how many of you here, were any of you ever born, were you ever born at home rather than, say, in a hospital? Is there anyone here that's born in a, at home? We had, a, okay, we had one, two, okay. I was born at a, in a parsonage back in the, kind of in the Ozarks in Missouri. And my father used to tell about the doctor who delivered me, delivered babies all over that community. And uh, the farmers did not have electricity at that time, back in the early 30s. And so the doctor, the, the, the farmer would hold the lantern while the doctor delivered the baby. And in this case, the baby was fine and everybody was happy. But then the doctor says, wait a minute, he says, I think there's another one there, and sure enough, twins were born. Well, at that point, the farmer and his wife were a little bit concerned, but they said, well, God has cared for us up to this point, he'll continue to do so. And my wife and I can relate to that, by the way, because uh, we didn't know we were having twins until after they were born. They didn't have those tests in those days. So we were kind of surprised too. But we had these two boys, and David Mack, you know, because he has helped you on various occasions. Uh, we had, and then his brother was born. And uh, we always wanted a girl. So we prayed real hard for a girl. And we had our, our congregation pray for a girl. And our friends and relatives prayed, we have a girl. And guess what? We had twin girls. We prayed too hard. <laughs> so so be, be careful about what you pray for, OK? Well, back, back to the farmer. The uh, doctor says, wait a minute. He said, I think there's another one here. And sure enough, triplets were born. At that point, the farmer who's holding the lantern starts backing out of the room. And the doctor protests. And he says, no, no. He says, bring the light back here. I need the light. And the farmer protests back and said, no, I think it's the light that's attracting them. <laughs> 
And it is and it was the light of Jesus Christ who shines on us and we reflect his light as well. And we do so oft times and in many ways, but certainly by helping those who are very, very poor. There's a text in, in Isaiah 58 verse 7 that says, share your bread with the hungry and then your light will shine. The world needs to hear Jesus' voice, but it also needs to feel his touch. Matthew 25, it's kind of a theme for food for the poor, where Jesus says, when you feed the poor, you are also feeding me. Live more simply in order that others may simply live. There's a Proverbs 21. If you close your ear to the poor, you just might cry out someday and not be heard. Jesus goes down to the blind and to the lame and the helpless and the poor, and he brings them up. You know, want to know what the kingdom of God is all about? The least will be served. Matthew chapter 11. I've learned, especially when I was in district office as district president, that uh, the church so often is like a giant pyramid where the greatest are at the peak. I know, I have been there. But our Lord says, it shall not be so among you. And he turns that pyramid upside down so that the greatest are still at the peak, but the peak is down here where more people can be served in love. Jesus says, it shall not be so among you. And Jesus calls us not up to rule, but he calls us down to service. And on the cross is where he reached the greatness of service and his promise, I am with you always, even to the very end. So that it's not our attainment that counts, what we do, but it's his atonement that counts, what he did. We are called to repentance and forgiveness, have the filters lifted from our eyes so that we can see the least among us, Matthew 25. Jesus warned about accumulation of wealth only for ourselves. Everybody is wealthy in this country, at least according to many people in the world. That's fine, it's fine to be wealthy. But we need to share that wealth with those around us. Jesus says, give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Mark chapter 10. And God does this through us. So it's not simply about just raising a hand to God, but it's about reaching a hand out to those who are around us. Jesus' last sermon before going to the cross was his concern for those who are poor and for need. And that's the concern of food for the poor. We serve the poorest of the poor in the Western Hemisphere. The Caribbean, like Haiti, places like that, and Central America, where people are living in cardboard boxes and mud huts. I've been to all of these places, and it's just amazing how people are living. But that was Jesus' last concern before going to the cross. I was hungry, and you fed me. Be an organ donor. Give your heart to Jesus. Jesus shows us how to serve by dying on a cross for us, to redeem us, to serve. Go, the gospel lesson for this morning said in Matthew. Go, I am with you always, even to the very end. God doesn't ask for volunteers. He simply says, go. He said that to Gideon. He said it to Abraham. No volunteers on God's part. Only go, serve. Paul says, be imitators of God and walk in love as Christ has loved us. Dear ones, let us not love simply in words, but also in deeds. That's told us in 1 John chapter 3. Love is the theme of the New Testament and it's the theme of food for the poor as well. Bear one another's burdens, show hospitality, and in the process you will entertain angels unaware. People tell me charity begins at home. I say, well, yeah, maybe so, but it go doesn't stop there. It goes beyond where we live, and that's what Food for the Poor does. So any support that you give will be much appreciated, and I think God loved as well. We had a chaplain who served the uh, federal prisons out in Hagerstown, Maryland, and he had quite a congregation. Well, of course, it was one way to get out of their cells on Sunday morning. But at any rate, he had a large congregation. And after about a couple of years, 
he announced that he was going to go on a retirement, uh, no, let's see, a sabbatical leave, <coughs> and that he'd be gone for some time. So they quickly wrapped, they were hard, sorry to see him leave, but they quickly wrapped uh, a gift for him in the only paper they have, which was a newspaper, and asked him, don't open it until you get home. <laughs> when he got home, he opened the package, you know what he found? His own watch, his own billfold. <laughs> All these things, personal items that these professional had, had professionals in their, in their category had lifted from. But it was the note that was contained uh, therein. I don't know whether they realized it or not, but they were quoting from 1 Chronicles 29 in the Old Testament. We didn't have anything to give to you, so we gave you what was yours in the first place. And isn't that true of our gifts as well? Jesus says, freely you receive, freely you give, to whom much has been given of him or her shall much be required. The gospel, as I love you, so you are to love one another. God's love is lavished upon us. I'm sure that all of you are asked the question from time to time, hi, Roy, how are you? You know, that's just, just uh, they expect you to say fine, right? Well, I... <laughs> I used to be kind of crazy about that. <clears throat> I would say, hey, I am so glad you asked. Sit down here. It's going to take me about a half hour to tell you how I am. <laughs> well, I've kind of gotten over that now. And what I say is, uh, in the spirit of Psalm 23, I'm flourishing. My cup runs over. And I try to use that overflow in order to help others. My cup runs over. So with that thought in mind, I simply call your attention to the brochure that you have in front of you. Please, if you will open that up. Uh, you will note various ways in which people can help the poor. <laughs> the, the biggest way, of course, is by building a house for $9,800. You'd be surprised how many people have done that in the places that I and some of the other speakers have been. And I don't need to read to you what's all on here. You can share with the poor in any way that you are able. But you'll notice that the highlighted area, if you just pull that off, and what you have then is an envelope, and you could put a gift in there if you so desire. You can give it to me at the door, you can put it in the offering plate. Um, or you can send it off, by the way. It, it's already addressed, and it already has uh, postage uh, marked on it. So in any of those ways, you can serve and help the poor. And the motivation is the cross and the resurrection of Jesus. Given to us, by the way, in the second lesson in Acts chapter 2. And also, very clearly in 1 Corinthians 15, there are two sets of monosyllables in both those places that are a summation of our Christian faith for all time. First set in those passages, Christ died for our sins. And the second set of monosyllables, Christ rose from the dead. That's it. That's the reason for serving. That's the reason for being concerned about those who are in need. That's the power to love and to forgive and to share. Best is yet to come for all of you, for this congregation, because the worst is over. Christ died for us. Christ rose again for us. So it's not our attainment, but it's his atonement. I thank God for giving me the ability at my tender age of presenting this message to you, and I thank God for giving me a wonderful congregation to share this with today. Thank you, and thank you. I began with a prayer. I'd like to close with one. It's from Philemon. Only one chapter in Philemon, in verses 4 to 7. I thank God always as I remember you in my prayer, for I hear of your love and of the faith that you have in the Lord Jesus. And I pray that the sharing of your faith may promote the good that is ours in Christ. For I have derived much joy and comfort from your love, my brothers and sisters, because the hearts of the saints have been blessed through you. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. amen. Thank you, Roy.